I'm in a Teams meeting this morning, and I'm jabbering back and forth with people at the job. And um, I've been contemplating this. And after this weekend, uh, I flew into New York on Thursday night. I think it was Thursday night. And we out and we partying and all of that stuff. And so we start going through our schedule and, you know, me and my daughter and stuff like that. And, we, you know, we got Japan, Tokyo coming up. And everything is so difficult for me to be able to move around as much as I used to, primarily because I'm just a lot more busy, right? And so even me having to, to contain my mornings to be available, and some of y'all that's been on the coaching calls and stuff like that, you already know that how I manage my schedule, I share my schedule with y'all. A lot of the bag chasers is familiar with it. Um, it's becoming more and more difficult. And so I'm talking to somebody on, on at the job this morning, and they said, Anton, I need you to do this, and you're going to have to become more involved, and you might have to come into the office some more. I said, oh, okay, all right. When I woke up this morning, I said, God, Give me the signs that I need to make the difficult decisions in order to make sure that I'm continuing to trudge forward and I'm not hindering myself and I'm not preventing myself from really, really becoming what it is that I'm supposed to be. And so a lot of times God will communicate to you, in my opinion, in ways that you don't really think that he's communicating because you think that it's supposed to be a specific voice and a, and a face that comes out of the sky and reveal it to you. But God often at times reveals things to you, in my opinion, through the people that you surround yourself with, with the circumstances that you face, and more importantly, he'll put it right in front of your face. You just got to be able to pay attention to the signs. Now, the people that's a part of the Patreon, you've also understood that uh, I've shared with you my uh, earnings and my W-2s and everything of what I work, what I make at that position. So you know that this is not just a light decision. Shout out to Sherman Williams. I'm going to be reading that Super Chat shortly. The reason why it's so difficult for me to go ahead and let it go is because a lot of y'all understand the amount of bags that we busted down at this place. Shout out to Jaquel. I'm going to be reading that Super Chat shortly. This is not a light decision. This is a lot of money. This ain't no $100,000 a year. This ain't no quarter million dollars a year. I make an egregious amount of money at my day job. And as a bag chaser, uh, A, I owe you the responsibility of being transparent. And then B, I also have to be absolutely honest about uh, what the value of my time is, right? And so when I'm determining whether or not I'm going to walk away from a position or, or if I need to quit this job, I'm looking at the bonuses. I'm looking at the base pay. I'm looking at the 401ks. I'm looking at all of that, right? And so, like I said, the people that's a part of the Patreon, you know that it's well over a half a million dollars a year. And listen, I don't care where you at, what you do for a living, how much you making in your businesses, how much content creation is paying you, what you busting down when it comes to real estate or whatever. If you making over a half a million a year, that is a hard sell to walk away from. So let me ask y'all a question before we really deep dive into the show, because this show is largely going to be based off of having conversations on capitalism. We're going to deep dive into the chicken Alabama. Um, I want to I want to share with y'all a couple of different things. It's a TikTok surgeon has recently lost their license. Um, it's a lot that's going on. Right. So let me ask y'all a question in the chat. And I'm watching y'all and I like to interact with my people in the chat. Here's my question. At what point? What is the determining factor? And I'm not even really sourcing what y'all think I'm going to say. What is the determining factor for whether or not you're going to quit your job? I see Portfolio saying, nope, don't let it go. Jay Reed says, school them on capitalism versus socialism. What is the determining factor for whether or not you're going to walk away from your position? Because I will tell you this. Most people think that Having your own business makes you a boss or that you buy your time back and all of that other type of shit. Jake Fever said bills. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's have a conversation that we have often at times. How much is your, how much is your time worth? 
Your time is not worth how much you make per hour on your job. How much is your time worth? Some people said health, death, money. Uh, Ali Music said they got to fire me when you start losing bigger bags to become of it. If you found a better one, if you find something better, the amount of time and freedom it gives me when it doesn't make sense anymore, energy, new position. Y'all saying a lot of things. Depends on how much you lose. Executive Suite MLE is in the building. Shout out to you. Sabrina says no more growth, more growth, no more money and more growth. Definitely times. It pays poorly and it's a toxic environment. Well, that's not a factor for me, right? Because it has nothing to do with what, whether it pays poorly. It pays me phenomenally, right? But it's a couple different factors. But in order for me to teach you this, because remember, on the Millionaire Morning Show, it all comes back down to the money, right? In order for me to teach you this, I got to go back to, especially for the people that's just joining us for the first time. My voice is a little hoarse because I was, you know, having a good time in New York, Patreon meetup and all of that. All right, so let's break it down. How much is your time worth for the people that's new to here? Your time is worth not necessarily how much you make per hour on your job. Your time is worth how much you make per year divided by 8,760, which is the amount of hours in a year, right? So, for example, if you make $100,000 a year, your time is worth somewhere around $11 and $12 an hour. That means that's how much you make when you sleep, how much you make when you woke, when you're at work, when you're playing with your daughter, if you play video games. If you decide to entertain this chick for the streets, your time is worth the 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 basically the difference between somewhere in between 11 and 12 dollars an hour okay cool so now that we've got that established let's throw away the myth that is bad to have a regular job let's throw away the myth that is bad to have a regular job it's not because whether you build your own business or you working for somebody else the value is how much they pay you for your time the value is how much they pay you for your time. So you have to trade in your time for money every day. And the myth is just because you own your own business that that make you a boss. For most of these people, owning their own business makes them broke because they work way harder for less money and less benefits, which doesn't make it worth them actually spreading out and going on their own because they don't understand business and they don't understand how money works, right? So just because you start your own business doesn't mean that your life is going to be easier. It means that you don't have healthcare coverage, dental means that you don't have a guaranteed job, which nothing is guaranteed because you can get laid off at any time. Uh, it also means that you you may or may not make money that week because you eat what you kill, right? And nobody is going to pay you an hourly wage just based off of your ability to be able to generate revenue on your own time. So now that we got that out of the way, now that we got that out of the way, what I'm trying to tell you is that when you trade in your time for money, then we start to add in the other factors. So the other factors are, and this is one of the biggest things for the bag chasers, is, is it worth it for me to use this time to continue to make money, or is there something else more valuable that I'm missing out on? That other thing that's more valuable can be uh, making more money because you can allocate more time and resources into your business. It could be that you've gotten to the point, shout out to Lifestyle Enthusiasts, I'm going to read that super chat shortly. It could be that now you've had the ability to buy your time back and because you've made enough money or you have a big, of a big enough nest egg or you make it, made enough investments that you want to start to enjoy the fruits of your labor because you put so much time into building up your brand and your businesses. It could be a lot of different factors, right? It could be that you don't want the stress of taking on additional projects or you don't want to adjust or possibly lose any money or lose any growth or traction on the things that you're building because it's now requiring more of your time. And most people cannot, they can't really do a real good evaluation because they're so busy focused on whether or not social media considers them a boss instead of focusing on whether or not they're going to make enough money to be able to survive and then thrive. One of the reasons why it's so easy for me to take this into consideration and then on the flip side, why it's so difficult for me to take this into consideration is because A, I have no bills. Every bill that I have is associated with the business. So the business generates the revenue. The revenue then generates whatever it is that I have to do from a bill perspective, such as, for example, I got a bill with this studio, but this studio was largely paid for by the amount of energy and revenue that's generated in the building. So I needed this in order to continue to generate more revenue. It makes it much easier for us to do our jobs, do interviews, so on and so forth, so I can justify the cost of this building. 
As far as regular consumer debt, we have none, though. So that makes it much easier, right? The flip side is it's more difficult because you're still leaving a whole lot of fucking money on the table. It's a lot of money still being left on the table. You see what I'm saying? You still got that 401k. You still got that health care coverage. We still have insurance. And I'm not just talking about your regular insurance. I'm talking about also life insurance. That factors into it. So it's a lot of different things that goes into it, right? But ultimately, after having a discussion over the weekend and looking at my calendar and my schedule and my trajectory, I realized that I'm probably leaving more bags on the table at this point then I can justify by staying in a position in which uh, they pay me a lot of money, but I can make way more outside of it. And I've afforded myself the ability to buy my time back. Right? So it's time to enjoy life. I'm 41 years old. Uh, my father never got to the point of his life in which he was ever able to retire, and he thought that he was going to work for the rest of his life. Um, when he died, he died broke, and he died in debt. Uh, and I am the complete opposite of that at this point in my life, right? So, you know, y'all know I'm building the rental properties. I'm going to be doing a live stream on the Patreon about that. Um, we got a lot going on from a business perspective. And here's the other factor. His, this was the determining factor, right? I have such great relationships and such a phenomenal network that at any point I can go back and get that bag again. Or I can always go and get another job if I just wanted another job. I can always go back and get a bag, right? The things that we've been able to do in corporate America is not luck. It is intentional, right? So if at any point I always got this in my back pocket, always got it in my back pocket. So you guys are the first to know. Uh, I will also tell you that uh, the plan is to basically give them my notice at the end of next month when I come back from Japan. Um, so I'm tying all of my loose ends. I'm making sure that everything is updated. I am making sure that all of the projects is going to be tied with a bow tie. And I want to leave on good terms. And then after I leave the position, I will be updating my LinkedIn and you guys will be able to go back and see exactly where I worked at. Right? After I leave the position, you guys will be able to go to my LinkedIn I will update my LinkedIn with the position and you'll be able to go back and see exactly where I worked at, all right? So it is that time. Uh, it's time to take that that next step in the direction that I think that we we supposed to be going in. Uh, I've allowed myself to really, really be able to buy my time back. I've made a lot of money. I got all of the bonuses. And my daughter is in high school. And so I want to spend more time doing things that's meaningful to me. I'm going to be traveling the world. I'm going to different countries that do not allow for me to be able to work from there because it is not on the approved list of countries that I can work from um, based off of the encryption and, and remote logging in and stuff like that. And I'm never fucking going back into the office. That's over. I'm not going back into the office. Last time I went back into the office, I said, nah, this is cool. This is cute, but it was a time for this. And now I'm in a whole nother space. So next month I will be turning in my notice and it's time to move on from corporate, corporate America. And then next year, I start building my dream house. That's to come. That's, that's, that's new information. So uh, thank you guys for continuing to support me and allowing me to be able to live my life as an open book on these platforms. Uh, I will keep you guys updated, and it's going to be absolutely awesome.